What you're looking at here are the six integrals that were given as part of the 2010 MIT Integration B qualifying questions. So in case you don't know what the MIT Integration B is, what are you doing with your life? It's incredible. It's, it's kind of like a spelling bee, but for integration, that's all you need to know. 2010 is an interesting year. This was sent to me by a friend of the channel, Jay Winfield. But 2010 is interesting because that's the year that I started university. So I didn't go to MIT, but if I had gone to MIT, and if I had been brave enough to enter their integration B my first year there, um, then I could have taken these. So that's kind of interesting. Anyway, I, I'm not going to do them in order. I'm going to do them in the order that I did them on paper when I just looked at them. I started with number four because I looked at it and immediately just thought that's really easy because all you need to do is, I mean, there's lots of, I should say, there's lots of ways to do all of these. I have not done the most elegant efforts at all. I just did all this in half an hour. So yeah, these are just the first things that I did. Anyway, you combine the 1 plus 1 over x into this, because of course 1 is just 1x over x, and then you add them together. You can say log laws mean it's log of this minus log of that. Please try all these questions before I do them, because I think they're really good fun. You expand the x out to either of these, and now I knew in my head that I knew how to integrate things with form x log of function of x, basically, for as long as the function is not too complicated. Something linear like this is super easy. Um, so that's why I had all this done in my head, and I was just like, I can just do this. I can do both of these by integration by parts, right? So um, you firstly split the intervals up to just do two separate integrals. That's fine. Probably more intelligent ways of doing this, but integral by parts in this first one says integrate x to make x squared over 2 because that's the thing that I want to integrate. Just write that down a couple of times. Uh, leave this one alone here and then take away the integral of a differential of log of x plus 1 is just 1 over x plus 1, of course. And then, of course, the same thing here. So integrate x a couple of times, get x squared over 2 a couple of times. We're taking away a negative, by the way. Um, so we're going to take away, but then when we, when we take away this integral, that's going to become a plus because of this takeaway here. Anyway, and then leave this one alone here and then differentiate it to be this one here. And uh, and yeah, we uh, I mean, this simplifies, right, to x over 2, which then integrates to x squared over 4. So I'm just happy to write that down. This is the only thing left that's not too easy to do. Uh, but whenever you have an integral with something like x plus 1 on the bottom, just do a substitution of u equals x plus 1. It will work out a lot of the time. Um, so anyway, in this case, it does, right? Because this is a linear substitution. There's no need to change the dx. Just make it immediately a du. Um, x is just u minus 1, of course. That becomes that. And then this becomes u. Expand this thing out. All of this has been left the same, by the way. Expand all this out and then divide everything by u. This becomes u squared minus 2u plus 2. Sorry, plus 1. Divide everything by u and you get this. This is all easy to integrate. To come this, and I'm not going to simplify anything here because MIT integration rules, unless I'm mistaken, say that you don't have to integrate anything. As long as you've got no integrating to do, you're done. The only thing I do have to do here is replace these u's with x plus 1, and I'll end up with this thing here, and that'll be my final answer. There's certainly simplifying to do here, um, but I think the MIT integration rules say that I don't have to do it. They also say that you don't have to write a plus c, just in case you're tempted to comment that in the section anyway. Anyway, so that's the first one done. Um, number five, it was just below number four, so it's the one that I did next. I think that was my reasoning. I also thought that a substitution of u equals log x would probably go pretty well here, so that's what I just did. Uh, this is not linear, so du equals 1 over x dx, I guess is how we'll differentiate that. Move the x over here. x itself is e to the u, and uh, we have our substitution all done. Um, so we'll replace dx with e to the u du, and, uh, and it will look like this. This again looks to me like it's doable with integration by parts. So that's what I did. Integrate the one you can integrate, which is just e to the u. It integrates to e to the u. Leave, the, uh, leave this one alone here and then take away the integral of, integrate this one again, which is still e to the u, and then differentiate this one. Imagine this is sine u all squared. The 2 comes down. Uh, the sine to the power 2 becomes a sine to the power 1. And then the derivative of sine is cos, and we end up with this. I've written it like this because this is hopefully recognizable. It's 2 sine, uh, sorry, it's sine 2u. Um, and now I've put that in red because what I'm going to do is I'm going to call the red integral i. And I'm going to do integral by parts again. So integrate this a couple of times uh, there, leave this one alone. And then take away the integral again, leaving uh, integrating this again is there. And then differentiating that for 2 cos u, uh, sorry, 2 cos 2u, of course. And we end up with this here. Now, that hasn't really improved the situation too much. So I'm going to do integral by parts again here. It looks exactly the same as what I just did. Uh, some 2s multiply out to make some 4s, some negatives, because when you differentiate cos, it actually differentiates the minus sign, so this actually becomes a positive there. Um, but what I've done here is I've noticed now that this thing here is that original integral that I was trying to resolve over here. So I can say plus 4i over here, and, uh, and everything else is just being left the same. And of course, then I can expand this out and move those negative 4i's over to make 5i's, divide by 5, and I can just shove that result into there. I'll end up with this. 
again, that's all integrated. There is maybe some sort of buying to do. I don't care. The only thing I'm actually going to do is replace the U's with log X's and uh, and uh, E to the log X, of course, or E to the log X is just X, or just E to the U is just X from here. And we end up with this here again. Plus C is uh, unnecessary in integration piece or MIT integration piece, I should say at least. Question number three then ends up being, I think, the easiest one. Again, it's one that I looked at and thought that's just going to be really easy. I've seen integrals like this, I think, before. So the power two is not complicated, so I'm pretty confident I can expand whatever out to the power two. That's fine. The power third is more complicated, of course, so I want to avoid doing anything complicated here. And the way to do that is by making a substitution of x equal uh, x minus one equals u, because of course that means I can replace this with the u to the power third, which is not even an expansion. Like it's really easy. X plus one, of course, becomes u plus one because adds two. Uh, sorry, u plus 2, because adds 2 to both sides here to get x plus 1 equals u plus 2. Put that in there. And of course, I can expand out the u plus 2, or squared. I can then put in an u to the 1 third, and then I can just integrate, because I did year 12 integration. So add, adding 1 to a fraction just means adding the denominator to the numerator, so this becomes 10 thirds. And then dividing by 10 thirds is the same as times by 3 over 10, because I went to year 7 and did KFC. So this becomes 3 over 10, u to the 10 over 3. And likewise with this and this, you end up with this. Do it yourself, I don't care. Uh, put the u back in, of course. Uh, u is x minus 1, so put that back in. And, uh, and we end up with our answer. So that was a very, very quick one. We're halfway down. Um, I think the next one I looked at was the second one. Basically, I was just trying to avoid the first one. Was all I was. My only strategy here was avoiding the first one. Uh, we've got a definite integral to do here, which is fine, I guess. Uh, it's a sine cubed of 2x. Now, I'm going to write that as sine of 2x or cubed. And then I'm going to use the trick. Uh, we've seen it before today, I think. Sine 2x is 2, sine x cos x. Um, of course, this cubed is just 2 cubed is 8. Sine cubed, cos cubed is just this. And then I just times by cos squared, sorry, by cos to make cos to the 4. Now, I've seen integrals like this before, which massively helps when you're doing stuff like this. So I know the trick, or at least a trick, that gets the kind of things done. Write sine cubed as sine times sine squared. Now, the reason that's helpful is because sine squared is 1 minus cos squared. This still doesn't look helpful, but promise, I promise you it is. Because now when we expand out, we get sine times 1 times cos to the 4 is just sine cos to the 4. And sine times cos squared times cos to the 4 is sine cos to the 6 with a minus there. Now, why is this good? Well, because if you did year 13 maths, you should know that these two things are super easy to integrate because you've got the derivative next to a function. This is of the form f dashed of x times f of x to some power, which means we can just use reverse chain rule, right? So this, this is just going to integrate to cos to the 5x over 5. Because if you were to differentiate that, with a minus in front, sorry, as well. Because if you differentiate this, um, of course, the 5 goes down to a 4. You times by 5, which will cancel with this 5 to leave your 1 here. I took the 8 out, by the way. And uh, and then, of course, the derivative of cos is minus sine. So if I put a minus here, um, that will cancel with the minus I'll get, and then the sine appears there, and we're all done. So this is fairly straightforward, so it's good. When we put in pi over 2 to cos, we get 1. So this just becomes minus 1 fifth um, plus 1 seventh. And... Uh, Sorry, I'm being an idiot. When you put in pi over 2 to cos, you get 0. So all of this is 0. And then you minus when you put in cos of 0. Cos of 0 is, what is 1, of course. Cos starts at 1. So this becomes 0 minus 1 fifth um, plus 1 seventh, 1 in brackets. Uh, you, you do some math. Sorry, this is minus uh, 7 over here, 5 over here. So that's minus 2 over 35. Uh, but the minus cancel. So it's positive 2 over 35 times 8 is 16 over 35. We have our answer. Good. Question number six, then, again, I was just avoiding the first question. The reason I was avoiding the first question, that sine x, sine 2x, sine 3x, was because I knew there was a trip, but I was just biding time to try and think of it while doing the other questions. I never actually found it. But anyway, question number six. E to the x, again, it's just a substitution. They they apparently love their substitution in qualifying exams. Um, u equals 3 to the, e to the x. Uh, just, just differentiate. Of course, um, u derives to just du, and then e to the x is the thing that derives to itself just with a dx. So 1 over e to the x du is dx. Of course, 1 over e to the x is 1 over u du. Um, so we're going to put that in there with the uh, e to the x replaced there. Of course, you just multiply these out, which I can just leave like this. And anyone who does a level math should know immediately what the strategy is to integrate stuff like this. It's just partial fractions, right? It's just partial fractions. Uh, we can multiply this out and, and compare with this one here. So um, 3a u plus b u is no u, so therefore 3a plus b is 0. And then um, 1a plus nothing else is 1, so therefore a is 1, which means b is minus 3 from here. You just put that those results into here, and then this is super easy to integrate. It's just log of u. 
uh, minus uh, log of uh, 1 plus 3u, because we've already got the 3 here, it's all good to go. And uh, and I think uh, I just replace it in there. Yeah, this is actually quite nice, right? u is e to the x, which you can then put in there, but then cancel with the log and the e to just make regular x. And you can actually just derive this to show that it equals this, and you're all good to go. And, uh, and that's done. So now the very last question. I never actually spotted the trick to solve this. I, I, I'm i sure there isn't like, a really nice thing you can do. Put it in the comments if you spot it. All I did was just reduce everything down to sine x's and cos x's, um, which isn't too bad, right? Sine, uh, we, we can use a lot of this. We've already discussed that sine 2x is 2 sine x cos x. So if you replace that with 2 sine x cos x, you end up with another sine uh, with the cos here, the 2 there, and then leave this alone. Now this one here, I can use this rule for by using a as 2x and b as x, and we end up with this, because of course this is sine of 3x, right? So sine of 3x is all of this, so I can replace that in there, I expand everything out, and then I aim to replace the sine 2x and cos 2x. Now sine 2x is just 2 sine x, we've already seen that a few times in this video, so that makes 4 sine cubed cos cubed, and then over here, slightly more complicated, cos 2x is cos squared minus sine squared. That's just something that you should probably memorize. There's a formula book in exams that will help you. But anyway, so of course, expand that out, and we end up with this. So just expanding this out and expanding this out into there. Uh, these two things go together, which is really kind of them. Um, and then, okay, how do we integrate this? Well, this is super easy to integrate this bit over here because it's just that reverse chain rule we saw earlier. And this is super easy to integrate, not because it's reverse chain rule, but because we can play exactly the same trick that we did last time. In that we can just write this as cos times cos squared. I'm just doing it the other way around. Cos squared is 1 minus sine squared, so this is cos times 1 minus sine squared. Uh, expand that out, and we end up with this. And then uh, these two things actually go together, which is kind of neat. And then reverse chain rule um, gets you your answer by doing, um, have I just done nothing there? I've just written out the thing where I got too good yet. And then reverse chain rule gets you this, and then you put some stuff in, and you get this, which is this. And you're done, and the question's done. And that was um, all six questions from the 2010 MIT Integration B qualifiers. If you're going to MIT this year, um, please take part in the Integration B. If you are not, make Integration Bs in whatever chosen university you're going to, because everyone needs every university needs one. Uh, you know, join the maths, uh, uh, what's it called, math society, math SOC, and, uh, and organize an Integration B in whatever establishment you're in, because they're good fun.